Okay, I'm trying to find this line, and I can see there's like a dip where the path goes around here, and the line looks like it's just on the far side of a fence, which is at the top of this hill. Here we go. Okay, it's basically on the other side of this gate. I think it might be on the other side of that field. I think we've come up the wrong side. I think it's that gate. That gate over there. Yeah, that is definitely it. That's it, they're right there. We got this. Okay, it's right before the diagonal path merges with the path we're on. And I would say it's here. Yeah, yeah, it's right. It's right here. There are three different definitions of north. You've got true north, you've got magnetic north, and you've got grid north. And for the first time ever, all three of them have aligned in the UK at exactly the same place. And that place is here. As of November in the year 2022, they did align just out there in the ocean, but the point has moved. It's currently here. It's going to keep going that way and it will pop out the other side in Scotland around July 2026. Now, there's the obvious question why is this point moving around? But before we deal with that, I'm going to find somewhere less windy, probably dangerously on the cliff somewhere, and we're going to look at why we have three different norths. Uh, Okay, true north, as it says, best north. If you've got a spherical spinning object, and I like to carry a prop with me to demonstrate a sphere, it is my head, uh, that north, there it is right there. Now the planet is on an angle and it spins, but that center of rotation is the top of the planet. It's, it's the top. It's the same distance from the equator in every direction. It is north. There's no arguing with true north. However, Grid North is what you get on a map. So this is an OS map. The Ordnance Survey have been mapping the United Kingdom since the late 1700s, and they sell these fantastic maps. And I love rambling, it's a great hobby. My wife and I go on walking holidays. I own a lot of these maps, and yes, they have an app, but that's just recreating the experience of having a physical bit of paper, a big rectangle, big square of paper, and you use a compass to navigate around it. And on this, they like to put a grid. The issue is, True North makes for an awful, awful grid. But to explain that, like, I'm going to live with you here. It's been raining a lot on the walkover. The wind is freezing cold. And if I know future Matt, like I think I know Future Matt. On the way home, Future Matt's gonna go to a pub for a warm drink. Uh, probably a pub with a hilarious maths name. So I'm gonna hand over the explanation for what grid is used on a map to Future Matt. Oh yeah, I found a pub. It's super warm. And it's called The Square and Compass. So good. If you're ever in Dorset, I highly recommend coming along. They have an incredible range of both beers and, and crisps, chips, uh, for you Americans. But anyway, I brought this myself. This is not available in the pub. This is my spherical chalkboard. I think none of us should be surprised I have one of these. It's actually my wife's. She uses it for drawing uh, like she's a solar physicist and so she draws solar configurations on it. So let me borrow it so I can demonstrate that if you've got your equator kind of down here, that's the equator line, and then I draw in this line of longitude. So I'm going from the equator down here all the way up to the true north, that circle at the very top up there. And then let's say I'm a map maker. And I'm like, oh, I definitely want to have this bit on my map. And I want to have the next grid line over. So I'm going to draw in the next line of longitude over, oops, over there. There we go. And then, of course, they meet at the top. If they start apart at the equator and they meet at the top, they've got to get closer together as they go up. So your map maker comes along. It's going to stay there. Excellent. And they're going to make their map on a flat, flat surface. And they start by putting in their central line. So they're like, 
This is the beginning of my grid, uh, right down the center there. There we go, look at that. First line of the grid, so far, so good. And actually, we can line that up really nicely. So if I line up the bottom of this one with the bottom of that one, and then I curl it up, I can perfectly match that line at the top. In fact, if I tip it right forward, I can put that there. No problem. And if you've got a flat surface, you can absolutely curl it in that one dimension. No problem. And you're like, well, I need to do the other line now. So actually, the other line, it starts there. So you know what? I'll just very quickly put in the next line of my grid. So it starts there. I'm going to run it parallel. As a map maker, I really just kind of feel it go by eye. I feel like that's, that's pretty parallel. So then you're like, oh, amazing. Right, so I pop those down there. Look at that. Line up with the two lines, no worries. This center one goes all the way up. And look at this, way off. It's all the way, I mean, I'm covering a decent percentage of the globe, right? So it's even past the line after the next one. But whatever the case, we can agree, this line should be over here, should be there, and it's ended up over here. And if I did do it there, I'll add that in as a dotted line. <laughs> if, I, if I break this, uh, it's gonna be a real awkward conversation when I get home. So there we are. So that's, so if I actually followed true north, this is what my grid would be doing. It would be narrowing in. So that's not desirable. So it turns out because of the nature, taking a 2D surface, mapping it on to a 3D sphere, you can pick one line to line up perfectly and the rest are gonna be a bit off. So when the OS maps were working out their maps, they're like, well, we could use Greenwich on the zero line of longitude, but instead we're gonna go with two degrees west and that's because it's kind of the closest whole line of longitude so an integer value of longitude that's as central as possible and because the further out you go the worse the alignment of true north to grid north becomes you want to minimize that distance and so two degrees longitude is like the minimal value of the maximum error you're going to get in the UK and so that's why uh, past Matt is on the two degree line of longitude uh, right now, even as we speak. Back to you, past Matt. Yep, still here, still cold. Been waiting the whole time. And I am on that two degree line of longitude. However, if I wanted to go to the three degree line, it's just over 70 kilometers in that direction. And the one degree line is just over 70 kilometers in that direction. However, by the time you get up uh, north of Aberdeen, uh, up in Scotland, where this line leaves the UK, at that point, it's under 60 kilometers between the lines of longitude. And so if you use True North to do your grid, by the time you get up there, you've got 84, a bit of 84% as much land between each pair of lines. You're effectively zoomed in by about 19%, and that changes gradually as you move up. And the, don't get me wrong, these people, they like their scales. They're gonna get real upset if the scale is changing. Uh, the only good thing to be said about grid north compared to true north is that once you compensate for that correction, like you know how far you are from two degrees, you work out how far you've got to change, it stays the same. If you're there at any point in the past or future, it's always the same correction. It doesn't move around, unlike Magnetic north is the worst, but it's real easy to measure. You just need a compass. Get yourself a shiny rock with some other properties, let it suspend, and it'll point to north. So even though it's a bad north, it's really easy to measure. And the reason it's bad is it moves around, which is why we're gonna get this freak alignment. Magnetic north is moving, which means it's gonna line up with the other two. However, I said right at the beginning that this confluence of north by north north is moving up the line of two degrees longitude. And you think, well, hang on. If magnetic north has moved to line up with the other two, it should line up the whole way. I mean, that's just the direction of north, but that's not how magnetic north works. It's even worse than that. It's not just that it moves around. It's not just that the south magnetic pole can't even have the decency to be in Antarctica. They're shooting all over the place, but the lines themselves aren't straight. I mean, this whole planet is just a sloshy mess. Uh, speaking of which, back to future Matt in the pub. Magnetic fields, 
are a mess and a compass is not a smart device. All it can do is orientate itself with whatever the local fields are. And if there's nothing else in the way, that's great. But if I bring my phone over and here I've actually got my compass app running. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to verify analog with digital. But if I bring the two together, suddenly the analog moves around because there are magnets in my phone. It's changing the local magnetic field. And now it's going back and now it's going wrong again. So the compass just shows you whatever is happening in the local magnetic environment. And the earth is not one perfectly neat bar magnet. It's not like the lines come out of the top are perfectly straight and go in the bottom. Oh no, they go all over the shop. The lines are going this way, the lines are going that way. I actually downloaded from uh, the department NOAA from the US government. Um, this is a 3D 3D model of the Earth. Uh, actually, they give it as a flat model. I've mapped it onto a sphere because please, flat models. So I've taken their data, put it onto this sphere, and I can drag it around. And so the lines are showing you. Now, they're showing you how far off your compass is, but they're not showing you how far off your compass is from where the field should be pointing, where magnetic north is, because that's all over the place. So if you look at the moment, magnetic north at the top here is like, over here somewhere. Oh no, there it is. Is it over there near Alaska, I think? And if you look at the southern, south, there it is, it's over there. Like it's not even in Antarctica. I don't know. I bring it up a lot, really bugs me. I feel like someone should look into that. However, uh, the magnetic poles move all over the place and this is not showing you where they should be. It's showing you the difference between the wonky local field, which we call the declination of the Earth's magnetic field, and true north. So it's just showing you how far off by accident, the magnetic field is compared to where you care about. And you've either got the red lines, that's where it's pointing, I think, too much to the east. You've got the blue areas where it's pointing too much to the west. And because of the intermediate value theorem, you've got the green zone. That's where it's perfect. Doesn't mean it's pointing in the right direction. It just means that the magnetic field is messed up in a way that it accidentally compensates for the difference between the magnetic north and the true north. And if you look at these lines, there's one that goes from the South Pole through Western Australia up to the North Pole. There's another one that starts at the North Pole, comes down, then goes back up again. And look at that. It goes right, oh, zoomed in too much there. It goes through the UK. So this data is from 2019. And you can see at that point, it went pretty much through London. So if you're in London and you've got your compass out, just because of the mess of the magnetic field, it would accidentally point towards true north, you didn't have to correct for it. And that green line, that line of accidentally don't need to fix anything is moving to the west. And as you can see, it's on a bit of a tilt. And if you're moving a line, it's on a bit of a tilt. So here I've got our original perfect line from my map. And let's say this ruler is the, the zone of no correction. If I gradually slide the zone of no correction across and you follow where it intersects with the only line where grid north equals true north, it looks like it's moving north up that line. But that's just because the line of zero correction is on an angle and it's moving from the east towards the west. And that's why that point is moving gradually up that line. So there you are, at this one particular point in time, at this one specific spot, I can look at my map and grid north is that way. True north is that way. Magnetic north is that way. They all line up. Well, if I hold everything still, they all line up perfectly in that. Oh, I think my compass, there it goes. It's rotating very slowly to point in the correct direction. I'm so excited. And it's gonna move across the UK, going through such hot spots as Birmingham probably other places as well. We'll put them on the screen. Ooh. Sirencester, Cheltenham, Birmingham, Stafford, Leek, the M62 motorway, Berwick upon Tweed, Aberdeen, Fraserburg. Go and check them out. Eventually it goes out the far side, just north of Aberdeen, a place called Fraserburgh. Uh, we think roughly July, 2026 if you're planning ahead for that party um, but the earth is a sloshy mess so who knows but what an incredible alignment I'm so glad I'm here absolutely worth being this freezing cold and windswept
Now, if you excuse me, I have a future Matt to go and become. Thank you so much for watching this video where I've trekked all the way to the edge of a cliff to talk about three Norths all at the same point. And, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, look, I didn't come all the way here in the wind and rain for future Matt to do the wrap up in the pub. I'm in the past. I've earned this. I am the pain before that gain. I know time is an illusion, but rain is very much not. So if you don't mind, although you do make a good point, please subscribe. We don't ask very often. And it would be nice if you could subscribe, support the channel, uh, like as well, I guess. Do all those things you gotta do, it'd be great. I'm sorry we interrupted, if there's anything any of us can do to make it up to you. Actually, there is one thing that would make me feel a lot better. If everyone could subscribe. Ah.